the one who lifts his voice. What a great blessing and honor to start in the presence of Yah. All oh, you that have joined us, greetings from Teshua and the remnant of Yisra'el here in the heart of Yerushalayim. You may be seated. What a great blessing. Your grants us the opportunity that we may come into the bed of Yah. As the old folks will say just one more time that I may exalt, esteem him, and lift him up. What a great honor and a privilege that Yah elected you out of the 6.6 .6 billion plus on this Shabbat. And through the course of the evening of yesterday, there were many that passed from this realm of life into eternity. You cannot retract anything. You cannot go back. You cannot rectify anything that you have done wrong. They're in the stage whereby there is only one thing that they must wait for, and that's the judgment of Almighty Yah. And out of all the people on the earth, it's not because we have done something so extraordinary. He simply elected by his choosing to cause you to arise up out, as the old ones would say, the slumber of sleep. And cause your eyes to be awakened that on this Shabbat we may give honor unto his great name, to the excellence of his power, and to the might of his authority. And Yahshua HaMashiach. So I do barak ya for that privilege and the opportunity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't feel the best today, but I'm going to preach, teach, to hollow whatever Yah instructs and directs me in that I shall do with a sense of urgency and with tremendous tenacity that the victory is mine, the battle has already been won through Yahshua HaMashiach. There is not a weapon that is formed in the dungeons of hell can destroy the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. There's one thing that Yah, He permits, He subjugate us unto certain things in our lives that our minds began to ponder the reason why it is to simply cause us to realize that we must have total reliances upon him we cannot look to ourselves for any strength it must come from one that is mightier than i we have no power to control anything in our lives whether we perspire and whether we stink, whether our breath, and that's part of the process of life. But it's one thing that we can know without a shadow of a doubt that Yah has everything under his mandate. And that he is in control of all things, Yisra'ah, for he shall restore unto him the beauty and the excellence of his melchuts, his kingdom. And a kingdom cannot be built unless there is a format that's laid out in a construct that there are laws and judgment, disciplines, ordinance, statutes, correction, counsel. There must be a construct to the kingdom. I do not care if it's a kingdom of darkness, of military power, there must be a construct to that kingdom's authority. And Yah has given us the writ, the writing of the construct of his kingdom. Anything that's outside of that construct, it is an enemy. And any time our minds operate in opposition to what Yah commands, then we are the, we are the enemies of Yah. We have a personal assault against him. And we will attack him. We will try to dismantle and to destroy uh, his government, his kingdom power. And we will go 
headstrong in doing that. We have no knowledge of what we are doing. We have no wisdom of that matter. And that is why he forms and shapes our minds into the mind of Yoshua HaMashiach. It was a mind of Torah. It was a mind of discipline. It was the life of the hearts of Yah. His mind operated by the very heart of Omar Yah. And so it is in the kingdom of darkness. There must be a construct. There must be an order. There must be pillars of strength to maintain those that are subject and subjugated unto that authority. And the enemy knows that there is a great battle for the kingdom of Yah to be established. And he has pursued his own kingdom mandate. It is like one going out and signing up all those that are willing to be participants in their devious action, their plans to assault against Yah. And so the enemy is doing that today. He is signing up all those that are willing. And when that mind becomes in tune, when the law of darkness began to operate in that mind, it is a mind that rejects, it is a mind that despises, it is a mind that hates the Torah of Yah. It is a mind that rises up. We have never done that when we heard things that cause us to become very antsy, to become very indignant, as they did against Moshe, the children of Yisrael. He said, your complaint is not, it's not against me. You rising up is not against me. You rising up against the one that sent me. It is him that your assault is against. And so when this mind began to rise up against our birthright, our bechor, the right of the inheritance of Yisra'ah, our inheritance right, then we will begin to sell out as Esau did. First of all, he was profane. He was vile. His nature was that of nida, unclean. He was treacherous or bagad. His tongue was full of lies and deceit. His mind was not in tune with the disciplines of Omar Yah. He was a profane and he was one that was of the fornicating. He loves the interaction between the God, the God of your belly, the God of your unfaithfulness the god of your stubbornness and so he interacted with that spirit when it came time to sell his right he sold it and there was no place found for him to make teshuva he could not shoot he could not turn around when that mind began to blaspheme the very name of yah the authority of yah Yah says, if we take his name in chance, you will not be held guiltless of that charge. We have a generation of people, personally unto us, our relatives, and those that we admire, and those that we think highly of, they defy his name. They desecrate his name. They spit on his name. And Yah says, you will not, you will not be held guiltless when you have taken my name and said it is of no worth. That's what Asaph did. And that's the power of this dark kingdom that when this kingdom power arises in one's bosom, it causes all men, great, rich, small, poor, those that have nothing to those that have much uh, to receive the mark of this kingdom power of darkness. Uh, that their minds are given over unto every kind of seductive uh, alluring of hell. Uh, 
Their appetite is refreshed. Their palate, their taste buds are revived when they began to eat from the stench and the darkness of hell. Their minds gravitate to that which is diametrically opposed unto you. And they began to take delight in it. It may start off as a simple thing that one lies. And then they have no sense of the guilt of lies. And then it is perpetuated continuously by lies after lies after lies to cover their lies. You know that's the spirit of Hashatan. You know that the kingdom pillars, uh, and that is one of the pillars of hell. For no liar is going to tarry. No liar is entering into the milchutz of Yah. And no dog that denies him. Simply their damn gods, their name, its name, turn around backwards. G-O-D and D-O-G. It is a damn dog. And I don't repent of that. Uh, well, you may die. Well, if I die, I die in the arms of Yahshua HaMashiach. I make no apology at all. When it comes to that, you understand? And so the construct of this devious force of hell, it began to become established in the bosom of one. And where they began, they began to sell out the rights, the inheritance rights of Yah, for some of the most trivial things that have no substance at all, Yisraya, that has no value and no power to one's life. And then they walk as one dead, filled with sin. They have a will, a desire. And so lying, it doesn't, it comes without any kind of trep trepidation. There is no fear. They lie like dirty, damn dogs. And let me tell you, it makes no difference how old you are. When you tell a lie, you all lift your heads up and look at me. It makes no difference how old you are. None whatsoever. When there is a propensity to lie and to practice lies, you have a birth of darkness in you. I don't give a damn who you are. When you began to operate in that kind of a spirit, there is something sick. There is the power of the kingdom of darkness in you. In you. You of your father, he was a liar from the beginning. Because he did not dwell in the kingdom riches of the Torah knowledge of Almighty Yah. And when that one speaks, he speaks a lie. Because his kingdom is based upon a false principle that is not based upon the disciplines of the Torah of Almighty Yah. And any time your mind speaks from that platform, is because you don't give a damn about Yah's truth. And any time you can tell a damn lie and have no fear of your damnable wicked lies, woe on. To you. I don't give a damn who you are. When I was a child, it's one thing you learned. Just don't lie. Tell me the truth. And so, our forefathers taught us to become practitioners of not lying. You may not have known the rights of the Torah, but they knew that that was the most vilest of wickedness that one could perform. They knew that that was out of the bosom of Hashatan. And so when one began to operate, you must understand, if he was a liar from the beginning because he did not abide in the Torah, when you began to breathe the, the death of lies out of you, you know that there is a construct of his kingdom design in your bosom. 
When you can lie and there is no teshuva. What are you saying, man? I'm simply saying that when one has the true dynamics and the ruach of repentance, they will not just lie to lie. They are careful in their speech and they will not speak a lie. And they will not speak of a matter beforehand. They are cognate and conscious of the tremendous uh, destructive power of that nature. And so they are careful, they are swift to hear. And then they are very slow. To speak. There's nothing more vile than a dirty lawyer. There's nothing more vile than one that speaks the Shekha. I don't give a damn if it's your daughters, your sons, your grandchildren. They can be and they will be given over unto every kind of vile spirit of that kingdom. But as we see this mind, this earth, this allegiance unto hell, you know that there is an alliance, an allegiance that one has given their strength over unto hell when the Torah of Yah doesn't even move them. It makes no difference if they are children or what. They have the ability to perceive, to hear. I've watched little babies cry and little ones cry because they sense the realness and the reality of the matter that was before them. And their little tears would flow as the Ima, the Avats would cry and weep before Yah. And so they had a reference point of their reactions as to what is being said and what is being done in the midst of this gathering, uh, this congregation. And when one has no sensitivity to their wickedness, their lies, you have a damn low, filthy, corrupt daughter and a damn low, wicked, corrupt boy that is vile and unclean. I don't give a damn who it is. And daddy, you better get it right. And mama... You better do the righteous thing. Because you consider what you did, that one is going to do worse than what you did. You understand? And that's a fact. You're not going to escape what you have sown. You have sown it in the most damnable utter filth. And you're going to reap it. You're not mocked. You think you're getting by? But you're not getting by. And that's a fact. And I'm glad of that. I'm glad of that. What I have sown here, I'm going to reap it here. And when one makes true teshuva, they began to sow unto the ruach. And when they began to sow the spiritual things, they began to reap produce the high hill, the strength and the power of the magnificent of the life of your sure in their bosom and their life alam viad. We have the strength of life in their bosom. And we are weak and fragile and sickly because we have given ourselves over unto the workings and the disciplines of hell. We're not going into the kingdom. He has an order and a construct. It is based upon pillars of strength that nothing can defy. There is none like Yah. His name is excellent. There is no destructive force of hell can destroy that. Yoshua is his Mashiach. There's nothing that shall destroy the strength of that pillow, his daba, his word. He grants unto us the Torah, a word of great strength. And in that Torah, as our Zachain has pointed out unto us, uh, 
We see the composition of that great pillar of strength. We see the wisdom of Yah. We see the understanding of Yah. We see the judgment of Yah. We see the love of Yah. We see the Ahava of Yah. We see the counsel of Yah. He has tried to bring our minds of ignorance and of stupidity. Yeah? Undoubtedly, there are those out there that are not among us that can appreciate what he is preaching and teaching. And it is a great blessing unto them whether we receive that or not. And there is nothing, as Joshua said, Think not that I've come to destroy this great pillar of strength, the Torah of Yah. He did not come to destroy his truth. And we must have a Torah in any kingdom. And that is the same mechanics of what caused any kingdom to operate. It may be a law of death and greed but it caused a kingdom to operate. So it is with Hashatan. We can see even in his lies. We can see the composition of deceit and destruction and murder and uncleanliness in his lies when he speaks. Those are the type demonic powers that go forth to seek a dwelling place to begin to sow zero seed. You know that you have been enriched with his seed if we can lie without conscience. You're a child of hell. You're a child of hell. I don't give a damn who you are. And these individuals of this generation and this generation, Ima, the Ima has no conscience of how she speaks. And that which has been shaped in her womb uh, is shaped by her words. She's not even conscious of that. I've watched the many how they have gone to the way uh, of hell and darkness. Uh, their minds are given to darkness. Uh, because that which was created by the power of the seed, uh, it was the seed that nurtured that in them. Uh, and their children are wayward in darkness and every kind of damn vile, impugnant thing there is. Uh, and that is the truth. That's why yours says, I'm going to judge you by every word. There's that one word that goes out of us we're not going to be judged by. So, keep your lying. Just keep on lying, okay? Continues to speak your lies. You know that that is a mind that has nearly reached the point where it has been seared by hell. And once it is seared, there is no truth that's going to penetrate that mind. I'm not praying for them. You pray for them. You better begin to pray for you. You better save yourself from this untoward wicked generation. Your prayer hasn't delivered you. So how you think it's going to deliver someone else? Yeah. You better pray, God, oh, deliver me. Your shaykh. Bring me to your rescuing arms. Set me free. That's what we better cry. That ought to be your supplication. That he delivers you. Oh, well, my son, my grandma, damn him. You better pray that he delivers you. Hallelujah. You better be like the one of Eo, Noach, men of that nature. That they, if they were in this generation, they would but only say themselves. They would deliver not son, daughter, husband, wife. They will only deliver themselves. I want to continue today uh, in that teaching that I've, we've begun concerning the mark of the the beast this oath this allegiance of hell that was the preface to this all right because i had to preface that to show us the very dynamics of the kingdom there must be a kingdom power established in in a nation and when you see the word people or nation in the torah 
It is enunciated in different forms, whether it is the feminine or the masculinity. When we see the word or am, when you see the word just like in our English vernacular, am, am, it not only implies a nation or nation, but it also implies the subject, the people of the nation. And we must be an am unto Yah, a people uh, that are subject unto his Torah, that in our bosom, in our minds, our uh, laba, our process or ability to process, to think, uh, to reason, to understand, uh, to have perception, uh, it must be established in the rush, uh, in the zenith uh, of the pinnacle or the high place uh, of man. And that's our mind. It must be established there. And that is why Hashotan, he knows through the very process of Yah that his kingdom laws, Yah has written them in our love, in our inward parts, in our mind or the place whereby that no one can find out the depth of your mind until you speak it. No one can find out what's in your mind, what you're thinking, uh, unless you speak and not even the powers of hell. Can enter in and draw out what's in one's mind. He may do things that are suggestive uh, and cause you to operate in that, uh, that he may find inroads to sow a seed uh, that you may continue to operate in that spirit, uh, but even the powers of hell. Do not know what's in your mind. Only Yah knows. It may seem right to you. But Yah is the one that searches the reins, what controls, and the depths of one's bosom, Yisra He is the one. He is the one that knows all things. And so the power of any king, he must establish his kingdom. Yah says, I will write my Torah, I will khatab. So must Hashatan. He said, you must take the oath, you must write this in your laba. You must put it in your mind. It's not some damn microchip. It's not that. Oh, the mind is being controlled by the nanotype processes and processes as it manipulate the minds of the masses of the Peter people through the hardware of computers uh, uh, and advertisement and television and radio because one little small nano chip uh, can cause uh, the waves uh, of a broadcasting wave uh, to re out, reach out for hundreds and thousands of miles just little one little processor enables that uh, to reach beyond the shores of your habitation. And so it's not some little chip being put in your forehead and it is scanned. It is the power that the wicked used and utilized the chip to disperse information, knowledge of matters that he may integrate that into your thinking. And that he may begin to take seat and authority in your mind. And once he does that, he began to administer his own mandate, his own laws. And it shows a covenant, a Brit, an allegiance, an alliance, an obligation, a faithfulness unto that aura. So that's how that operates. It is not a chip in your hand with these damn twisted, effeminate men that have written the books uh, and these immature na'a boys today uh, that are reading and uh, YouTubing uh, and finding things uh, and they're talking about things they have no knowledge of it. Uh, that's why you cause our minds to be stressed when we see things. We don't understand that. Uh, the things you read in the Torah you don't understand. You're not enlightened by that reading. And that's why he had Levi, the sons of Levi. That you don't labor for riches, you don't labor for houses of land. You labor in the Torah and watch my hand. 
And when Yisrael see the very depth of my hand to care and to fend for them because I take care of you, uh, then they will know that I am real Yisrael. Yeah. We must understand that. We must grasp that. And so our minds go into these great battles that we don't understand and Yah wants it that way. He intends for it to be there, that way. Did not Yahshua's mind have this great grappling of a battle of death? Sure did. He was there in the garden of Gethsemane. And he cried and he prayed. And the sweat fell off like great drops of blood. And the desire was to know what is your pleasure. If it's your will, your half, it's your pleasure. Tell me your pleasure, Yah. It is not my pleasure, but whatever your pleasure, let that be done, Almighty Yah. And so his mind grappled uh, with the very agony uh, of that which he had not experienced. For the Torah can never die, Yisrael. It is a light. It is a stronghold. Even in the eternal kingdom of Yah and the offerings. And all that shall be reconstituted as it is still today. As Daniel Yah says, uh, when we see the time, uh, when we see when the offerings and the oblations uh, are began to be held back, or the meat offerings, uh, they're not offered in the sincere aura that Yah commands, uh, then you know that we're in the season of the time uh, of the great desolation of hell. Uh, that mind turns against Yah. That's why you have to be careful of your neighbor, of your brother, of your sister. You've got to be careful of them. Because brothers will betray brothers and sisters, uh, sisters, a man's enemy, his foes will be of his own household, Yisrael. Because there's a mind that opposes you. It hates you. It is a mind that operates after the kingdom of darkness. There is one thing that a kingdom must have. Zohin Yaramiya, as he pointed out to us, as he asked Aksimion, to pan this room to show us the strength of the pillar. Every, every kingdom, there must be one pillar of strength. One. In order for Hashatan to establish his kingdom power, he must establish one of the most prolific, powerful identities or identifiers of his kingdom. It must be established in our minds. Can I tell you what that is? And you will believe me Will you believe me if I tell you? Will you believe me if I show you in the Torah? He must establish. He must. Was he a liar from the beginning? He could not abide in Torah. He must establish that deception and delusion of the mind. That's why Yah is going to send the delusions. Because they believe not the truth. Because they had not love for Torah. He shall send strong delusions that they may believe a lie well who is the father of lies Hashatan. that they're going to believe his gospel not the bizarre the teaching uh, the manifesto of yah in yahshua they're going to believe his gospel so he's going to send them a strong delusion the delusion comes because we have not received love of torah we don't love the torah we love lies we have no great affinity for torah and so because of that, he shall send them a strong delusion uh, that they may believe a lie. Does it say that? Isn't that what Shaul wrote unto Thessalonica? Yes. That they all may believe the lie and that he may damn them all. Yes, he's going to damn them. He's going to say, damn them in their God. God, damn you, God. He's going to say it that way, God. Yeah, their God. Damn their God. Damn their God to the Be'el. Damn them. They're Christos. They're anointed one. Isn't that amazing? You've got a little group here. They call on their Christ. He's, his anointing is different from that group over there. And that group call on their Christ. And his is different from that group. There's only one that has been anointed by Yah. And his name is, he is Hamashiach. He is the Ha Ha. He is the messenger of Yah, anointed by the power of Almighty Yah. Let me teach you a little today, Yisrael. I don't know how long I will stand before you. I intended if I had a thought about it, I said to my Yeshua, 
the difficulties this morning. You are always be ready to preach and to teach. You prepare yourselves daily for that opportunity. And so when you come, you will feed us with bread that we will say, oh, that tastes so excellent. You will grant unto us the meat offering that we can offer unto you the meat offering. That the bread will be satisfying. That the bread will not be bread without salt. Who wants bread without salt? We are the salt of the earth. And if we lose our salt, then what tar are we for? If salt has no salt, then it's stored away. I don't care what it is that you eat. Whether you have all of the chives and all of the other little things, give me the salt. The body doesn't give a damn about the garlic, chive, and all the other herb. Give me the salt. And so make sure the bread is salted. Make sure the bread is salted. It's going to be a tough week ahead because the unleavened bread is not just my forte. That's the truth. Give me some bread that is salted. And so when we come, we bring some salted bread. If nothing else, bring a glass of salt. You can dip the bread in the salt. Hallelujah. And so you always be ready. You young men with a testimony, make sure it has salt. You zokain as well, you older ones that have been here a while. That's right, my email. And you zokain, you being, you bath, your testimonies of great strength and beauty to bring resolution, strength to the bosom of all Yisra'ya. You'd be surprised at some of the things you may do, how others are affected. I had one to call me the other day, Oxymion was there. She was asking question. Her visual sight is somewhat impaired. She doesn't operate on the system, the computer realm. But she says to me, tell Raphael and the Hort, those that put up the site for the bath of Tizayan. My wife is just hearing this. That what a great blessing it has been to me for my strength to help me. And I want them to know that it has been a tremendous blessing, a tremendous strength. It has helped me so much. There are those that when this up, when they see his videos, they prefer his over mine. I like that. And they will say, thank you. That's all right. Appreciate that. So we must make sure there's salt in the lechem, the bread. You got to put the pinch of salt there. Don't over salt it. You don't want to be too salty, but you want salt there, Yisra'ya. That's the truth. You bake a cake without salt, you have nothing. It requires that. It brings the balance, it balances out the other fragrance of taste. Let us get real. Now what I teach today may not have much salt, so you may have to pinch from your nefesh and add a little salt. Just like when you sit down at the table to eat, before you even taste it, you sprinkle a little salt. All right, okay then. I want to reintroduce this verse to us in Gilyana. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 16. It says, This one that operated in the spirit of Hashatan, this pseudo prophet, one that when he spoke, the words were of lies and deceit, his prophecies were lies, he spoke of a, a hope or a sigva that had no basis in the eternal Torah of Almighty Yah. 
And because of the mind and the mindset of this generation, because uh, it is a mind that has gone away from Yah, there shall be one that rises up in the midst to the power of the kingdom of darkness uh, for one thing, and that is to satisfy the flesh. Because the flesh is enmity with Yah. It hates Yah. And so when this one rise up of this uh, new dimension of man, uh, there will be a dimension that you will go into because uh, we're going to show you our power. We're going to cause fire. And I will teach on that and show you uh, the significance of that fire. All right? Uh, we shall cause the fire to come. The heavens shall be open. Uh, and we shall perform uh, many miracles. Uh, the Simeon. And the health of a nation and the restoration of a people. It's all about one thing, restoration. It's about the restoring of a kingdom. That's what Yah is about to restore Yisrael unto the prominence of the place that he had birth in him before he was him. It was there. And so when was he him? He was him when he was him. So that was in him when he was him. Yisra'ya was in him when he was him. When Yah was him, Yisra'ya was birthed in him. When he was him, Yisra'ya was there. His power to prevail throughout all of his creation, he has chosen a broke back, weak subject of a thing called man. He has placed a seal upon them that this is Yisra'ya. He has scattered them out to the corners of the earth uh, that we have become a people of nuts, have no heritage to know how to attach. Oh, you got all these heritage thumpers uh, and they don't know you a damn thing. They tell you the same thing over and over, no more that, than what the apostolic and the Baptist and the Catholics uh, and them do. Don't even know the power of the heritage because it's one thing that when you eat some cake that's right, you want that cake. You don't have to change it. You want the same cake. Give me a piece of that. And every time you take a bite out of that, it gets better and better every time. As the old ones would say, your sugar gets sweeter and sweeter every day. And so the emphasis is more on who they are instead of whom he are. Tell me about him. I want to know the significance of his power, his might, his kingdom authority among his arm, his nation, his people. So he scattered us abroad and integrated us into every society upon the face of the earth. We became heathens and fools and jackasses. We became God worshippers and every kind of heathen, mystic spirit is among us. We became Jesus thumpers and Lord bumpers. Everything but Torah seekers to the revelation of the power of the testimony of Yeshua. We cannot discern a true Son of Yisrael, because our lights were so dim, and we looked at everyone from the dimness of our own eye and our own eyes. So when we saw one that had light, we didn't even know it. We could not even discern that. That's the truth. Let us not think highly of ourselves. Let us be honest. We are in a mess. We are a hogpodge of mess. Someone's making some goulash and saying, what do you got in there? Whatever. And Granny would go and whatever was left over, she would put it together. With, it, it, she could perform something. Little that, little this, little that. Put that in there. Put this. You didn't know what you were eating, but it sure did taste well. Feel the better. Better than a steak. Hallelujah. And y'all's going to take this mess of a people... And he is going to restore Yisrael. The enemy must restore unto himself uh, a defense against Yah. You must understand he was cast out of Hashemaam. And he abides in the heavens. Uh, he is known as the prince or the czar of the powers, the principalities, uh, the rulers of darkness, uh, spiritual wickedness in high place. Uh, he is the one that orchestrates that from uh, the pinnacle of his kingdom above. Uh, so his thinking is above our level, Yisra'ya. 
His thinking is above all other in the natural sense. But when we think in the, in the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach, there is no power of hell that can match us. We allow the Torah to design our minds and to design the construct of Yah's kingdom. There is no weapon in hell that form against that mind shall prosper. And when the tongues of darkness rise up against you, you can speak to their condemnation by the authority of Yah. We must understand that. We must understand that. The people of Yah, we understand how to do evil, but to do time, we don't understand how to do that. We know how to do every kind of wickedness. We know how to lie to be offensive and to cheat. I'm talking to you, my friend. You think I'm talking to this little, talking to you as well. We know how to lie and cheat. We know how to be conniving. We know how to be sneaky and corrupt. But to do time, we don't know how to. We don't know how to. It's all about the kingdom construct. And the enemy is saying, this is my sure seal. It's not the Ruach HaKadosh, the seal of Yah upon Yisrael. Is that not so? Is it not, does it not operate and cause the operation of Yah from here? So it is with the enemy. And so once the enemy takes control of this, then as the strength of our heritage, we will sell it. We will battle against it. It is almost like doing uh, the slavery uh, that they had those slaves of the south uh, to fight against those of the north. Those, uh, they fought against them. The confederates uh, against the rebels. They fought because they have been trained that uh, they are coming uh, to cause you much severity of death uh, to take everything you have. And so they will hoodwink, bring brainwash uh, to believe that. And that's what the enemy is doing to us. That's the truth. Perfect analogy. Yokohan said, and he causes all. He caused the small ones. And those that have no significance in this realm, or they're not acknowledged or identified. Do you, have you heard what that North American... Uh, uh, the lottery is, I looked in the paper this morning, $640 million. You see what this wicked world does, how it creates this anxiety among people. And whoever wins it, the group, individual, it will not, they will not even have that in their lifetime. And those that are elected by hell to win that, you have a place in the chronicles of his annals in his book. No, it is no thing you call luck, my friend. I will. It is no luck. You have been elected by hell. Just like Yah has elected you to seal you. So $640 million, and there are those that said, if I get this, this is what I'm going to do with it. If I get this, this is what I'm going to do. It is, it's this damnable selfish greed. We trust in Yah, and our confidence is in what he said. To have food and raiment, there will be content. You do not enter into the gates of hell, and to draw up an allegiance and a contract with the powers of darkness. And there are those that will say, damn my babies, damn food on the table, damn the milk, I'm going for the 640 million uh, and their chances are, are one in 16 trillion uh, come on hell there's only 350 million in America so what does that imply you got to buy hundreds of millions trillions of tickets in order for even the number to appear their chances was one in 16 trillion you and I, that little bath in your arm, in our lifetime combined, if we spend every second counting, we will not even get to a trillion. You understand every day, every hour, our lives would expire. And this is their chance of winning. Yah commands us to give unto him. I'm going to teach on the windows of Yah. I know we don't know that. I know you don't know because, listen, I understand this. We labor here. Now, some of us don't labor as hard as others. 
And you don't have time to study like we should. I know that. And so when you are granted unto a messenger to take time to study, then what I can do is deliver that unto you, and then will cause you to do uh, uh, an introspective, uh, detailed analysis of that, uh, and then you grow in that. You can appreciate, yeah. Come on, yes, that I, yeah. I understand that when a man has to work like these, uh, their bodies are beaten, worn. I understand that. I'm not that stupid. But you bath, you are grants to you to uh, make sure that the ruach of you and the life of his uh, power is in your home uh, because you have spent the time before you. Your home is clean and spotless. Every home should be spotless. Not junky. Not nasty. Not stinking. We didn't have indoor facilities, but our home did not stink. Not just brushing over. It should be toche. Not only does toche mean clean, ceremoniously clean too. So the bed had to be clean before Yah entered in. So he comes into a funky den of sin and filth and stench. Come on, Yisraya. So he grants to the bath, especially you had time to get up. Make sure your house is clean, spotless. My mother would say spotless. Spotless. And she meant that. You got so much you can't have it spotless, then get rid of the damn trash. You got too much. The house should be spotless. So when the man walks in, the book is open. And if you start practicing that, reading a Torah of delight to him, his body is aching, not with your damn complaining and muttering and busybody in everyone's affair. I don't know why I'm saying this. Undoubtedly, there are us that needs this. There are you that need this. that I love dearly Zakay uh, Thomas there in Charlotte he would always say to me Rayak, even though I was ignorant and still am you touch on everything that we need I have met a young preacher or a man that you deal with the gamut of the people of Yah every aspect he would always tell me that Yad deals with the whole garment of his house, doesn't he? We sing the song, Create in me a clean, clean heart. Oh, yeah, create in me a clean heart and renew. Oh, yeah, renew the right ruach in me. We sing that, don't we? So when the demonic powers come and they see a house clean and everything is in order but there is no fragrance of the testimony of Yeshua in there, he comes with seven more more wicked than him. Let us stop making our excuses. We're in the time and the season where not only should our natural or spiritual houses be cleaned but also your damn physical house. You search it. For everything you don't need. Get it out. Damn clutter and mess. Throw it away. Got rats dead on the piles of this and that. That's wrong. Come on, Yisraya. 
I don't know how much salt you'll get today, but uh, maybe a little less salty and over salted. I don't like too much salt now. That's just me. Just a little bit, all right? He says, and he shall cause both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, uh, to receive uh, an oath, a mark, a distinguished design of characteristic way to think, uh, the way to perceive, to understand things. That's what this is all about. That's why from the birth of the cradle of your child, uh, they wretch them, they take them out of your arms. And they put them as chattel uh, at what we call schools uh, to form their minds uh, according to the construct of hell. It is much more blatant today than it was in our days. It is much more forthright now than it was in the days when I was a child growing up. So they rush, they wrestle your children out of your arms by fear, by your desire for them to be successful. Uh, and the way they're successful, they must become integrated uh, into a system uh, of darkness. Their minds must be marked. Uh, everything that is pure must be destroyed uh, and desecrated. So you come up with this concept, I want them to get an education, to be successful, and to move on in life. I was thinking the other day as I heard one talked about children that we have seen that were so exceptional. Ten years old in college. Fifteen years old got a doctorate. They've already amassed a doctorate in the specifics of their studies. And yet, as you follow them through life, they haven't done a damn thing but worked a job. That's the truth. And people become so amazed at that. Show me one of them. This man that's supposed to have the highest IQ in America. You know they've changed the IQ test, don't you know that? Because they have those that are coming from Africa and the foreign countries that are making the IQ test look like a damn uh, child's test. And so they reformatted that, formatted that so uh, they can produce this, this kind of genius mindset from the corrupt children of this nation. You understand? That's what they have done. I know what I'm talking about, okay? And so you watch those from China and from Africa and places like that entering into the universities. They have just obliterated what we call uh, the uh, IQ test and made it to look like a little uh, ABC book. And so the whole format and the whole system of that has been changed. And they're changing it constantly. Yes, Raya. What a wickedness. And so the mindset of a generation is constructed by the powers of hell that we may walk according to the office or the mandate of that one that has the official power. Did not when the demons of Gadara say to Yahshua, why have you come to torment us before our time? You have no authority to bind us. Yeah, whatsoever things we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose in heaven shall be loosed upon the earth. You have no power to bind Hashotan. We have power to resist him. It is the same word. We bind him. We resist him. If we submit ourselves unto the Torah of Yah, you must be gone there. We must submit ourselves unto the Daba, the Debarim of Yah. Then we resist the devil and then he flees. The whole houses say, just bind him. Well, you can't bind him or resist him unless you submit yourself unto the Torah. It begins there. You must submit yourself unto the Torah of Yah. You must submit unto the Daba of Yah, unto the disciplines of Yah. And then you have the power to resist him. Was not your sure the word of Yah? It's all about a kingdom construct. And it begins. And as Zohim Yah Rabbi Yah has pointed out, you must have the pillars of strength or the foundation to build any kingdom.
And to build any kingdom, to build any government, to build any construct, you must have principles that are the outlaying of the construct or what is being filled in between all of those rights. You must have that. And the construct of the kingdom of hell, uh, it begins with the mind of darkness. It is the mind of rebelliousness. It is the mind that, uh, that desires to overthrow Yah. That I will ex excel or I will establish myself uh, in, in the north of the mountain of the hair of Yah. And that mountain, the hair, we are the mountains. We are the stronghold of Yah on the earth. And so he must establish his dynamic kingdom power in our minds. And it comes through lies and deceit. It comes through him sowing his seed. It comes through the chip. How they're able, something happens today, this second in Japan. Before five minutes over, it has spread it throughout the world. Through a way of viral uh, uh, YouTubing and, and all of this, my everything, it has spread it overnight, and you can literally see it, Yisrael. And everyone, tens of millions of people, will go and see something that is so damn dumb and stupid and has no relevance in life. They will spend hours watching it over and over. So it is the power of that little nanotechnology, the little small thing, because we think we can tell a small lie or white lie, but don't tell a black lie, all right? It's just a little small lie. I have to talk like this a little to establish this construct. I have to. Without that, we have no knowledge of the construct. He caused them to take the mark of the beast in their yamim or in their misak. Their mind is controlled. Their right is sold unto hell. He does it by subtlety. He caused the birth of uh, Chava when she sinned willfully against Yah that was brought forth out of her a vessel of light and one of darkness Ka'an and Habal and Yah put a mark on Kahan that no one would touch him so is Hashatan's going to put a mark on this generation that no one just like Ka'an Nobody touched him but Yah. Yah said, if any man touch him, he shall be cursed. If any man lay hands on him, I will deal with that man. And so Hashatan is congregating his seed. Those are the same mind, the same desire and the passion. That when he puts his mark on them, nobody's going to touch them but Yah. Is that given unto us to touch them? No one but Almighty Yahweh, Yisra'ya. At the great judgment of the Most High. So he caused them. He caused them uh, through his power to manipulate. He caused Chava to receive a mark. And we saw that expressed in the one birth fr from her bosom, Yisra'ya. We saw death. We saw lies. Tell me what Kayan did not do. He lied. He was a murderer. Hashatan was a murderer. He was a liar. He was a murderer from the beginning, Yisra'ya. And from the beginning, uh, the wicked go astray from the Emoth womb. When their birth, they go astray. That just did not manifest in Kayan. It was there. It manifests in the ultimate activity, but it was always there in his bosom, Yisraya. Our parents would say, I don't know what happened to him or why she did that. It was birth there, mother. That doesn't mean you think less of yourself. Well, why was this child born blind? Because of his mother, his father, no, he was born blind, that the power of Yah's works may be known unto Yisrael. Why were we born blind? We had no knowledge of Yah. So that the light of your sure Hamashiach will shine. And we will know it is the light of Yah. No, it's not because of his Ema sin, not because of your sin, not because of his sin. Yah's hand may be manifest. 
If he's mine, you're going to see my power to bring forth the excellence of my strength. I don't need your assistance. I will do it. Hallelujah. And so they shall take the mark. He shall cause them. He shall integrate them in a system, in a society that there is no wrong, no right, nothing. Are we not in a society like that? There's no right or no wrong. We cover some of the most vilest of wickedness. So we don't teach each other how to go before the altar of Yah and to repent. You're wrong, Ak. You're wrong, Achot. Come before Yah's altar. Confess your sins. Confess your faults before Yisrael. Well, they will talk about what I've done. Tell me who you've talked about what that one has done. This damn hypocrite generation. They want to hear what you have done. But they don't tell nobody what they have done. You're a damn hypocrite. I'm always confessing. When you're in my company, I always confess. I tell you what I do. I tell you what we did with that funds. I tell you what we did with that. I tell you what I did with this. I tell you what we did with that. In the time a man has this aversion for money, the love of it, there's evil in his bosom. When a man cannot be honest about the smallest of matter, he cannot be honest about a damn thing. You can discuss what others have done, but you can discuss what you have done. You can go to others and talk about what that one has done, but you will not go to the one that you know what she has done and discuss what you have done. You're damn hypocrites. I'm not backing down. When it comes to this, I don't back down for no one. I don't regard no one when it comes to this. Not my issue, not me. I don't regard nobody when it comes to this truth. I don't give a damn who you are. Not Zakim Mahalaya, Zakim Dawi, Zakim Binami, my friend, Shimri, my Zakim Yaramiya, come on, my friends, come on, Ak, all of you. Not even for you. Not even for you or your daughters or your children. You may think highly of them, but Yah reveals their nature and what they are. Hallelujah. He caused them. And he's causing many to receive this uh, initial as we were children. Uh, We'll have to go get those shots. I recall, Granny, we all cleaning up, taking a bath. It was one of the most morbid experiences you want to experience. Fearful. I remember walking down those country dirt roads to the little town. And Dr. Williams, or whatever his name, he was not the most friendliest of individuals. Uh, he did not like really dealing with the little children of color. And then he give a damn whether it hurt you or what. I'm telling the truth. Yeah. Crude and rude. They were crude and rude. They were mean as hell. They were crude and they were rude. They were crude and they were rude. And you will be so fearful. So fearful. And that was the initial indoctrination, the initial introduction. They began to create a different type of uh, tearing down of one's immune capacity. That's what they did. And so that's what the enemy does. He began to initiate and began to tear down the immune capacity. And as he began to tear down our spiritual capacity, he began to lay his stone you hear that he began to lay his stone you cannot have a building uh, without stone you cannot i don't care if you build a wood hut in order for it to stand against the wilds uh, you need some stone work there you cannot build a hot tower without going down into the ground nearly as deep as the tower is you must go that deep you have to and you must have the mechanism and the mechanical uh, engineering whereby when the winds come, the building knows how to sway a little bit and rock. You have to have that. You have to. Because if it doesn't, it's going to come down. You understand? And so that's the initial uh, development as the enemy began to develop. Well, you got away with that little lot. That ain't nothing. At the time we lie, it should trouble us deeply. It should trouble us so that we, you know, we can't even sleep where you can't eat. It should trouble us. 
until we get that right and rectified. That you will not have to repent of that matter again. In any kind of construct, it begins at one strong point. You must have a strong point. You must have a point whereby everything relies upon that contact and everything uh, is built or everything proceeds from that point. Uh, it's not your sure Hamashiach, the chief cornerstone. No? So everything proceeds or the mastery building of that building, uh, it must be built upon the principles of Torah that was revealed unto us through Yoshua HaMashiach. It must be. And then once we began to build from that, we began to construct the kingdom house. So he is going to cause all those great, rich, poor, young to receive the mark on their forehead. He calls this profane wickedness and the spirit of fornication just like Asaph was. Jirak says, uh, it is one thing about a fornicator that all bread tastes sweet unto him until he dies. All bread, everything. We can cohabitate with some of the most wicked of individuals. Your wicked sons, your wicked daughters, you have an ease with them, you have such a comfort. Your wicked grand youngers, your wicked cousins, and they defy you, they hate you. It should not be Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. If anything, they're going to run from you. It's all about the restoration of the kingdom. I want to point out that today because there's one thing I want to get to. I, I, I know I'm not going to have time. I have six pages of scripture here. I have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. I know that you that are listening think that I don't teach from the book. I just simply copy them so I can get to them quicker and don't waste so much time. Hallelujah. So I have six pages, and I know that my little friend doesn't want me to go through all these pages this day. I'm not going to mention his name, <clears throat> but he has been away for a day or two. But uh, six pages of Torah. But I want to read this out of the book of uh, Zechariah. Zechariah, the known be the prophet. And this is not only a metaphor, but a spiritual design of the restoration. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1. It says, after the death of Yehoshua, 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 that he speaks of this prophecy as Yah reveals it unto him. And this event that took place. I want you to understand we're talking about the mark in the right hand, the yamin. You must have, uh, you must square off everything or a building uh, before you began, Yisraya. Everything. You must begin that. In our days, we would say to one another, you must be square, man. Be square with me. Be square. That's simply, you got to be right with me. And so here this Nobi, he, his understanding is revealed by the messenger of Yah, as Yah utters unto him uh, some profound wisdom. Uh, and there's a purpose I want to begin here because I want to show us something that is very dynamic. And I don't know if I have the energy to bring out the essence of that today, but I want to lay just a little stone today, all right? Yeah. It is all about the construct. And the construct must be based and built upon something uh, that is dynamic and strong uh, and cannot be torn down. There are folks that have gone to the graves with lies and people believe them. They have died knowing they lied and people still believe them. They still do. People go to their grave believing the lies of the Baptists and the Pentecostal. And these lying devils call themselves Hebrew Israelites, uh, and the white Hebrews, and the black Hebrews, and the Israelites. Uh, they're liars. They're corrupt men and women. They've corrupted the word of Yah. In other words, they call themselves Jews, uh, and they're the children of Yah. They have no power of the Ruach HaKodesh of Yah. They have the damn Holy Ghost. Damn the Holy Ghost. 
Damn the Holy Ghost. Damn anything that is holy. As I said last night, y'all grinds me. I got too much work right now. But it's one thing that I'm going to deep and delve deeply into. And that is the Sanchrist language. I want to understand the depths of that. Because there are many idioms and phraseology. that came from that damn twisted language of hi Hinduism. And they have incorporated that in the way of Yah can't be. We must speak with the pure language. We must speak with the tongue of Yah. That's why when they began to speak in tongues, the utterance of tongue, they spoke in language, in a pure language. And the language was one of the, the, the excellence of Yah to magnify Him. I'm going to do the research. I don't care how long it takes me. There are things that I'm going to get done before I die. You understand? Hallelujah. The Nobi Zechariah says, uh, He says, And he, the Melach, he showed me, Yahushua, and he showed me the Kohan Chagadol. He was the high priest or the messenger or administering uh, the Torah of Yah that it was correct in every application. There was nothing that went forth before it had been coursed through the mind of the Gadol Kohan or the Kohan Gadol, the high priest. And your sure is our high priest, is he not? So there is nothing that in the mind of your sure that is not pure and right, it will not even enter in our mind unless we have the mind of your sure. So all of this other damnable wickedness, it is not from Yah. It is none of you. So he saw him standing before the Melach, the messenger of Yah. And he saw Hashatan, this beast of hell, like he did with Eo, standing, standing. He saw Yahushua or Yahushua, Yahushua, the same as Yahushua. The salvation of Yah. He saw Hashatan standing on not his surely his left, but on his right hand. Did he not see him on the right hand? For one thing, to resist him. To resist him. And they shall take the mark in their right hand. When you see the strength of any man, any nation that resists Yah's truth, you know that Hashatan is the strength of their birthright and their right hand. Was he not standing on the right hand to resist Yah? When we that think that we are right thinkers, when our thoughts resist Yah, it is the construct of Hashatan that he is. Uh, Engraving his kingdom laws in your mind. He saw him. Yah says, submit unto the Torah of Yah, and you resist Hashatan. This bastard says, uh, you resist Yah. Submit unto my law, and then you resist Yah. Is it not diametrically opposed? But it has the same uh, ingredients, doesn't it? The power to resist Yisrael. I know that wisdom is a very powerful thing. We need, uh, you know, we need understanding. We better learn how to discern. In the only way you're going to discern, you must become spiritual. You must have a spiritual law that governs you. Shaul said that a man, he that is spiritual, uh, he judge all things. And he is judge of no man. When you find a man that will not judge matters and individuals, he's not a spiritual man. I don't like a man like that. When I find those that are the covenant of Yisrael, and they are the Shafat, they're strong men, and they cannot judge a matter, judge that you are a damn weak man. I don't care who you are. I don't like a man like that. I don't want to be around you, man. Get away from me. But a man judge justly and righteously, I know he will judge me right. It is right, man. You don't have to respond today, but it's still right. What I missed last Shabbat, I said, I didn't hear you. And so I knew you weren't there. I didn't hear you responding to Zachary. 
Zohar knew something wasn't right. Everything was right, my ark. Hallelujah. He's on the right hand. I'm going to bring this to a culmination here in the weeks to come. But I must go slow today to get us to understand. He's on the right hand of Yahushua, Yahshua, to resist. Yeah. At our right hand, that's what this Yamim represents. It represents a mind that resists the instructions of Yah. That's why you have people that resist His name. They get upset. They become offended because they love their damn Christo, their Baal, their lords and their Jesus and their gods. I'm not going to let them offend the Most High. And I will say, damn your gods. That's why I will not even go to a place where they teach in the name of their damn Christo. Because I'm going to talk this way. And I know that there are those in there, the pastor may have maturity, uh, but those in there, they will rise up just like they did to Sephaniah, Stephen, uh, and they stoned that beautiful man. And he looked up into Hashemayim, didn't he? And who did he see? Your shoe, didn't he? Where did he see him? Where on the, on the shore, on the shore, Lee, or the, uh, or the right hand? He's some on the right hand. I'll get to that. He's some on the right hand. Hallelujah. And so there he was, Hashatan on the right side, uh, and trying to cause him to resist him. He was trying to resist him. And Yah said unto Hashatan, uh, He says, I, the Most High Yah, rebuke you. Oh, Hashatan, uh, he said, Even I am the mighty one, even Yah, that has chosen Jerusalem to place his name. I have chosen the city where my shalom is taught. That is what Yerushalayim is. Uh, the city, the elect place where the shalom of Yah is taught. Lamad. We are instructed. So as we dwell here today in Jefferson, South Carolina, we are in the love, the heart of Yerushalayim. So because we've been taught the shalom of Yah, the comfort, even in all of your rejection, how man despise, how your enemy come against you, and all of that you have comfort, that the Torah, the word of Yah, is your assurance of your inheritance. You have a right. Your right is in Yerushalayim. It is recorded in the chronicles of the stones of Yerushalayim. There is one stone. You cannot build a city without a stone. In most cities, they will have a stone sign to represent the entrance of the city. Show them all. You cannot build a city. You cannot build a government. You must move the stone to establish the heaven, the place of strength, that which represents authority and power. That's why our grandparents would look at us and they would have a stony look on them. You knew what it was. That look was not one that was gentile. That look was one that says, boy, I'm going to hurt you. That look spoke more than their words, just the look. He is trying to resist us. That's why he wants our right hand, to cause us to resist Yah. Yah says, submit to what I write, to my teaching. Then you can resist him. You submit to it. You submit to that, you can resist him. And Yah says, I rebuke you in verse 2, O Hashatan. Even Yah that has chosen Yerushalayim rebuke you. This is my city. This is where my shalom is. This is where my teaching shall emanate from. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Is not Yahushua, is not Yisraya a brand plucked out of the, esh, the fiery trials, uh, the fiery indignation? Are we not a brand? Have we not been branded by Almighty Yah Yisraya? Was not Yahushua one branded uh, before the foundations of the earth? Uh, did, not, did not Yah know you? Uh, had He not elected and chose you before the foundation? Uh, because you were in Him when He was Him. I will say that again. You were in Him when He was Him. Uh, 
This is not some plan. He has been him. His mind has been him since he has been him. His mind has been him since he was him. We will see him since he's been him. Everything in him was in him when he was him. And even if he tried to explain that to our minds, we can't understand it now. But as those folk will say, by and by, when we overcome, we're going to understand things by and by. That's when we get to the ultimate challenge, starting to get the presence of Yah, that our offerings will be right, they will be pure. Come on, Yisrael, then we will know all things. But before, when he was him, we were in him. Ever since it was him, we were in him. Your name was in him. You can't start with the beginning of time because if you are starting with the beginning of time, you can understand that. Do you really comprehend driving a uh, hundred thousand miles without stopping? You can't comprehend that, can you? Five hundred miles is tough. I said last night to drive all the way down to Memphis, Tennessee. That's a long drive. That's 726 miles. It's not long for him now. He, he'd take that, see, he, nah, to me. I don't like driving that far. It's a long way. That's a third across America. Yah rebukes you, Hashatan. I mind submitting unto this Torah teaching today. And we resist your damn lies. Hallelujah. And Yah says, now Yehoshua, uh, you're sure he was clothed with zur. He was clothed with uh, a fil filthy garment, a beggar, a garment of treachery. Well, what was the order of the Gadol Kohan? He had to take upon him the sins of Yisrael, just like Yahshua did. He had to take upon our sins. And so he had to bring that before the Chadosh of Chadosh. He had to enter behind the veil, and Yah dealt with him there alone. You understand? And he dealt with Yisrael. I do not believe he came out talking all rose and saying this uh, unto the Kohan because that relationship and that intimacy with Yah, his lips were sealed for the time and the season. We will know that and what transpired when we see Yahshua when he comes. There's nothing in the writings tell you what transpired. Because even the chronicles of man or the eyes of man did not peer behind that. So his garments were filled with the filth of the sin of Yisrael. His garment, his kali, his beggar, treachery, and every kind of wicked thing there was. And stood before the Melach. And Yah answered and spoke to those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garment from him. And to him Yahweh says, I have caused your avin, your iniquitous ways, your transgressing the Torah to pass from you. And Yah said, I will clothe you. Just like Chava and Adam. He said, I will clothe you with the garment, the Sadiq garment. And that's what he's doing, clothing our minds with the Sadiq garment, Yisra'ya. He must begin to dress us right, Sadiq. Not only the right hand, but we must be dressed right. Our minds must be dressed right. Our minds must be covered by the Torah, the Dhamma, the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. He must dress us right. And we must be dressed right in order to present unto him the proper oblation. That's why when the daily offering is taken from the tabernacle of Yah, then we know that we got to count 1,295 days because we know that the kingdom of hell has established the construct of darkness. We know that, Yisraya. We must stand on the right hand of Yahshua HaMashiach. 
We must stand and do what is right. As our forefathers would tell us, do what's right. Wherever you go, do what's right. It may hurt you, but you still do what's right. They didn't know what they were saying. You do what is sadiq. You do that. I want to establish this yomim for one purpose. There's a reason why I'm doing this today. I want to get to something that is very valid for us to understand. Quickly there in the book of Ma'aseth, Shilishim, the book of Acts. Chapter 7, verse 54. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on and say hallelujah. hallelujah. We greet you all that have joined us today. Yah's riches upon you all in Yahshua's name. It says here in the book of Acts 7, 54. When this great orator of strength and power, as he begins to utter, Tisaphaniah, Stephen, and when the elect of the renowned men and the august body of these religious perverts, when he began to speak out of the power of the Torah, they said, down with this man, kill him. He began to utter profoundly here in the, the book of Acts 7.54. And when the matter was concluded, verse 54, 7.54, and when they shemach, they heard these things, they were cut to their left. Anytime we hear the Torah of Yah, the word of Yah, the Dabab of Yah, it is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It should, it ought to cut us. They were cut to their love, and they began to gnash upon him with their teeth. They began to bite and chew like greedy beasts. Is this not the nature of a beast? You ever seen the clipping? I have. I've seen little clippings of lions when they hunt, and they tear open the belly of the willow beasts or, the, or one of those huge cape buffaloes. And they gnaw, you see their teeth, and they began to gnaw on him. I saw a clip whereby they began to eat a cake buffalo and the beast was still alive. And they began to eat on that beast. And it was still alive. There's a pack of them on the Syrian Gary Plains. And they were eating him and the beast was still alive, looking, hair turning, and they're eating and consuming. That's what this beast spirit is doing. It's eating us alive. It's eating our inward parts, it's eating our love for you, and we think we're living and we are dead in sin. We are treacherous and wicked, our garments are filthy. Yahshua sure said, Whom he has washed need not to be washed. If I've cleansed you, you don't need to be cleansed again. Hell, we've been partially, we're like children. Put the baby in the tub, they get in there and play. Been it all day. Trudging through my God, dirt under their toenails. Now, mama and daddy get in there with the brush. Oh, daddy. They want to play in the water. Mama get them nails and scrub that dirt. I cut them off and get them toenails. Oh, they're dirty. Nothing more vile than see, especially among a people that have access to things. The little baby's toenails dirty and they stink. And that's the truth, Yisrael. Yeah. It's a damn shame. Yes. Babies should smell fresh and clean. You got to carry water. When I was in Kenya, they didn't have water. Once every now and then, they would have water. I'll never forget, Pastor Kemani says to me, my brother, you know the Almighty, yeah, he knows how to do things you understand. Because, my brother, if we had tremendous humidity here, Oh, how do you imagine how the people would smell? Because we don't have water, we would sweat and, we, and the humidity was not that bad. And so I never sensed an overbearing odor of the people when I was there because I didn't bathe either. And so undoubtedly I may have smelled just like them. What difference does it make? Yeah. It says that they were cut to their heart. They began to gnash up him with teeth. But he being full of the Ruach HaKodesh, not with the Holy Ghost, not with the Holy Spirit. He was full of Yah. 
Yah is Ruach, not just a Ruach. He is Ruach. He is Ruach. Everywhere you go, he's there. He's in the trees, as the old ones would say. He's in the water, he's in the air, because he is life. His name alone represents that. He is of no begotten. He is. That's who he is, Yisrael. He was full of the rock. He was full of the power, the testimony of Yeshua. He was full of the life of Yah. He had the high of the strength. He had the tenacity and the tenaciousness of the working of the Torah in his mind. And he spoke. He didn't give a damn who heard him. He spoke the truth. And they couldn't handle it. And they began to gnaw upon him, eat upon this man like a beast. This behemoth, the spirit that represented in the world today, this beast government. It is a behemoth. It is a monstrous spirit. And it eats up the people, doesn't it? Come on, the folks in the city is eating them, but every dime they take it, eats them up like damn dogs. Yeah. At least the dog will kill and eat a little bit and go away. This damn beast spirit eats up the people. It eats up the poor bath with the two or three children with no assistance. It eats them up. It eats the life out of the individual. Sure it does. It's a beast government. It's the government that is uh, opposed to Yah's government. Because under Yah's government, everyone prosper. Under Yah's government, everyone has. Under Yah's government, no need for no one to have a need. Every need is met. That's why this generation cannot, as a people, assist each other. They do things for their own glamour, but they don't give a damn about each other. But they may give someone a bomb on the street, bleeding from the gum, a dollar, two dollars, and they think they've done something nice. And they justify their own corruption. And someone calls them, they may give them $20 or $50, and they think that they have done something uh, that is uh, commendable before Yah. It doesn't mean a damn thing. To you it may, but to Yah, it doesn't mean a damn thing. That's a command that we do tough unto all men. As much as we have opportunity, we do right by all men. But he says, especially Yisra'ya, you be sweet to Yisra'ya. You see, that, that wicked old woman the other day when she confronted me, I, I tried to blast that heifer. She, I wouldn't even call that a heifer. It was a damn goat. I said, you may be crude woman. When she saw this big black man, she wasn't about, you believe me, even if her wimpy husband had been there. I said, woman, you may be crude and nasty. Everyone is not rocky. And I was talking like that. Well, I said, you, no, no, you shut your mouth, woman. You may be crude. Everybody got quiet. Sure they did. I was going to let the devil get by with that. I said, you may be crude. And you don't give a damn about that Mexican woman. You're the one that will stand on the front line and say, build the fence. She didn't give a damn about that Mexican woman. I was trying to get in line. The woman saw me. She says to me, you go. I said, you sure? So you go. And this beast of a buffalo, she turns around, sees me. She's next. I didn't even respond to this damn beefalo. She says, she was next. I said, lady, you may be crude and rude. You may be that way. You don't know anything about me. Don't even approach me, you beefalo. No, you shut your mouth, woman. You don't even know what has transpired here. You don't even know what happened, woman. You be quiet. She got scared. Sure she did. I intend to pump the fear. Hell, I've been under the reign of, uh, of her heritage fear all of my life. Moving on. But this man, Tisaphanai, he was full of the Ruach HaKodesh. He looked up steadfastly. He looked up into Hashemaan. And he saw, now, now that is, I, I see Yas honor in the beauty of the leaves of the grass, but he saw Acts 7.55. He saw the honor and the splendor of Yah. What, what is that? He saw the beauty, the magnificent of Yah. He gives us a 
a glance every now and then. Uh, he shows us the rainbow. Uh, you understand. But he saw the excellence of Yah's beauty. He saw the, can you imagine that? I will never forget as a young man, Evangelion Hartsfield says to me, Brother Robinson, how many different colors do you think there is? He said there are colors that Yah in his, uh, in his color scheme that your eyes could not even, you, 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 they, they don't even have the ability to pick up the spectrum. And every one of them is identifiable. He said, can you imagine that son? I've always held on to that. He saw the splendor, the beauty, the excellence of Yah. And then out of all of that beauty, he saw your sure Hamashiach standing on the right hand. You hear me, Yisrael? Well, you're not going anywhere, man. I will go somewhere with this. Don't worry. He saw the strength, the heritage of Yah on his right hand. He saw Yahshua HaMashiach on his right hand uh, and said, Behold, this is what he said now to all of them. He said, I want you to understand. I see the heavens open. I see it all. He said, I see Ben Adam, the son of man. I see the righteous authority of Yah standing, uh, standing on the right hand of Yah. Yet Yah points out unto us uh, by the voice of Zachariah that he is short time standing on the right hand of Yahushua, Yahushua to resist him. He stands on the right hand of Yah to resist the powers of hell. He is the word that is submitted unto Yah. He gets, grants unto us the power to resist uh, the authority uh, to overcome Yisrael. And that's why he knew he had power to resist even all that they were doing to him. Of all things, he saw the splendor. He did not say, uh, I saw the splendor again. He saw the, the art of the beauty of Yah, but he had to reiterate, I saw him. He was not just standing anywhere. He was not standing on the left. He was not standing ahead of him, but he was on the right side of Almighty Yah. He is the righteous saw. Uh, he is the righteous covering of Yah. Just like we are the righteous covering uh, of Yahshua HaMashiach. And it's one thing that this bastard, this beast of hell, uh, HaShatan, he needs uh, some covering, Yisra'ya. And so him on the right hand, standing, will signify that this is what all of Yah's truth birthed from this standard, this is the insignia. And we as a nation on the right hand of Yahshua, then all of this truth emanates out of true Yisrael. Not these little, uh, little fringes of hypocrites uh, doing their own little thing. Uh. It's not of Yah. He saw him on the right hand, standing. Saw him. It's about a period of restoring. Hashaltan is trying to restore a kingdom that he has never had. He's trying to build a kingdom and Yah is going to restore his kingdom. He's going to restore his people. In order for Hashaltan to begin this initial process, uh, he must take strength in the Mesach. He must put his code, his barcode, his code, in the minds of the people that they sell their birthright and once our minds become so seductive on the hashatan we will sell our rights of inheritance unto hashatan i will use a natural example it's like a mother and a father leaving riches to a son and he takes all of that money and he blows it away in his nostril with cocaine they leave all this money to a daughter and she within a span of a limited time she has exhausted every penny they leave land and homes to their children and within a period of year all of that has been lost they have not maintained they have not taken care of that the way they should have and there is no riches among them at all Yah has said my right hand he has put it in his right hand the seal of his strength the seal of 
his kingdom power, the seal of his scepter. It is his right hand, and your sure is the right hand of Almighty Yah. And so Hashatan is trying to cause uh, this right hand or to cause uh, a preventative measure that we may resist him. We don't resist Yahshua. We submit ourselves uh, unto the authority of that kingdom power. We submit ourselves uh, unto that mind uh, that is complete and perfect uh, in all the orders of Almighty Yah. We do that. We will not sin. We will not sin. Yokohan said that for he that sins is of the devil. I don't give a damn what you say. He that has been birth begotten of Yah sins not. When this man has been birthed in us, we will not transgress the Torah. We will not defy the Torah, Yisrael. I know what the world and our days, what they call sin. Because a man, he drank a little wine, he did a little this, that's a sin. That wasn't sin, Yisrael. It may, may, may not be the best thing for you, especially this mess they make today that corrodes your liver and kill you. Come on. And cigarettes, just smoking one is not sin, but it sure in hell will put you in hell. It will kill you. That's a fact. And you look like a stupid individual smoking one. Smoke all out of your nostrils and you stink like a dog that has bathed in his own dung. Stupid for you to traumatize your lungs and torment your body like that. And say you're son of Yah. Your body is the bed of Yah. It's a damn dirty, filthy thing. Sin is the transgression of the Torah. Our body is, is, the, is the habitation of Yah. So you don't do things like that no more. And you eat the pig feet and the chitlins and the lobsters and the shrimp and all that. I'll read one verse here. To give us some kind of direction as to what I want to show us between now and next Shabbat. I'm going to finish this one. You know, Yisra'ya, sometime I began a message even in this teaching. And I began to study and see other things. And I somewhat lose sight. So you all have to just bear with me on that one, all right? Because I know that what I have looked at, it is vital for now. You understand, Yisra'ya, we must understand the power of this right hand. It's not a chip. It is a chip, but it's not a nano chip that they're putting in everyone. It's not so. Because every man, he will cause all rich, those on the continent of Africa, those in, 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 in China, those in India, in the United States, rich and poor, every man, to receive a mark. So how, you know, the, the idiocy of that how does one that is uh, a Messiah warrior, that deals with Messiah, he wants to buy some milk or trade it with blood unless scan me. How do I know you're Messiah? How do I know you're Messiah warrior? How do I know you're Dugan? How do I know you're Hutu? How do I know you're Tutsi? Well, they don't even have electricity. This is a stupid Stupid. You can sell this generation anything. This is a stupid generation. It is stupid. It is appalling the stupidity of us. His people are sottish. So how does that work? It is a mind. It is a conscience that has been developed by a kingdom construct. And it has laid its ebon, the stone, the building stone whereby the builders build. And one of the most prominent stone in the kingdom of hell, it is the stone of Shekha, lies and murdering. Hate, you up without a cause, you are damn murderer. You are murderer. And Hashotan was a murderer. I want to read this in the book of Lucas. Luke. And then I want to tie some things in to show you this restoration. Luke 4.3. This is going to be the most vital point that I want to make today. And then as I teach, I will show you why I read that and this verse here. 
And Hashotan said to Yoshua, If you are, if you be the son of Yah, he said, I want you to serve command this ebon, this stone, this mighty hair to become bread or made bread, a lechem, the offering. It is one thing that we must understand in the restoration of Yah's Bayat. There must be a continuous offering of the meat offering. And when you see the word meats or meat offering in the Torah, it is talking about the offering of lechem, the bread offering. Was not your Yeshua's body one of meat, human meat? But he was the bread offering for Yisra'ya. And so once we see that offering taken out, Yisra'ya, once we see that dissolve out of the mind of the people of Yah, once we see we have so our right hand that we resist giving unto Yah that which is rightfully and just due unto him, Hashatan said to Yahshua, command this heaven. You think he had a little stone in his hand? Command this to be made bread? I will show you that's vital to understand uh, the very construct of the kingdom. You must understand this in order to understand the construct. You cannot build a towering, strong, fortified fortress uh, out of straw. You cannot do it out of clay and stubble. The Tower of Babel, of Babel it was made of bricks stones ebon you cannot build a kingdom uh, from a stony heart yisraya that is the only heart that hashatan can use uh, to erect his kingdom mandate uh, among the people it will be proven out in torah in this teaching uh, as we proceed yisraya quickly here as Kepha speaks unto us first peter Chapter 2, verse 4. This whole thing is about the, the, uh, the, the adulation or the worship, the Shekha unto Yah. That's what it's about. It's not the beast or this false entity of hell, this false prophet going to cause all them to worship the dragon whose deadly wounds were healed. Is not there something greater than the prophet or the pseudo prophet? It is the one that orchestrated in the power of deception, the one that declared himself as God. That's why Hashatam, when he said to Hava, the day you resist Yah, you are God. The day you resist him, you can stand up against him as a God because uh, I'm a God. I'm the God of this world. And the message of his power of Yeshua, it is hidden from those. Uh, if it be hidden from those uh, that believe, uh, it's because the God of this world has blinded their eyes. It will be hidden from any of us. The truth of Yah be hidden from any of us. It's because the God of this world has blinded your eye. So he said, to, he said to Hava, you think that those were the only words transpired there? Yah just gave us, uh, he, gave, uh, he, he gave us a synopsis of the matter. Yeah. The day you defy him, you will produce gods unto yourself. That's why we see even as we come to Pesach, as we do the communion, Yisraya, there are many that have communions. And what they call it eating, I will do an article on that, hopefully this week, if I have time. I got so much to do. That they will eat Osiris uh, and Asia. They will eat the flesh or eat certain things uh, that constituted the flesh of their God. And they will become God-like. Did not Hava eat the words of Hashotan? She ate his words. And she became God-like. So there are those, don't think because we're doing this that they are another vile, uh, repugnant, what we call religions. Uh, do not do the same thing. This is not new, Yisraya. It's beyond the little breaking of the bread and the drinking. You're sure that the that, that middle of Pesach, when he did that, he said, always remember me during the time of Pesach. That's what it was all about. It was not as much about when the Baptists on the first Sunday of every month, or the Lutherans on the third and the fourth. It's not about that. It isn't, Yisraya. I'm telling you the truth. He said, when you all come together this time, do remember me. Zachar, maintain me. In your heart. That's what he was saying. 
Don't let this Torah truth uh, uh, be eradicated out of the hearts of Yisrael. Yeah. Is that making sense? Yeah. Sure it is. We have done things on such tradition. We, I, have been, I have been tricked just like any man. Getting too old now, just you, you can't trick me too fast now. Not now. Very impressionable and easy to be impressed. You can't do that now. That's just the truth. Your words don't impress me. I want to finish this in Kefar today. And I'm going to rest, all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says here in First Peter, First Peter, First Peter chapter two, verse four. We must have the building material to build. Did not Shulomo? He gathered all the material to build the house of Yah. Now those beautiful, as Zohar taught us, those beautiful red wood the cedar of lebanon the cedar of lebanon would be like what we call the redwood forest there in alaska i mean in uh, california those huge cedar trees pine it's one thing about those trees they never die they just don't die even if the root is on the ground they will live it's amazing isn't it so he giving us the analogy of the cedars of lebanon and so can you imagine that when they would go and cut those trees precisely and all of that beautiful lumber it did not tarnish, it did not lose its beauty, but yet there was something more massive than that had to be put in place, each of the stones. You understand? And there must be one stone put in place before the kingdom power of Yah is manifest in the kingdom. So it is with Hashatan. So Kepha, he utters uh, unto us, the nation, the elect, the scattered abroad. Uh, he says in 1 Peter 2, I want to move to verse 4. He says, to whom's coming as to a living, Ebet, a living stone. Now, uh, I've never seen a stone. I've seen some granite. I've seen some large stones, but I've never seen one living. I've never seen one uh, move. I've never seen a stone with animation. He said, to whom the one is coming, he is like a living Ebet, a living stone. He is a mighty stone. He is the hair. He is the mountain of Yah. He is the strength of Yah. He is unmovable. You understand? He is not just some little pebble. He is not a little pebble. So Hashatan did not say he is a pebble. Make it bread. You be the son of Yah. Make it bread. He is a God. If you be the son of Yah, command this mighty one. I'm mighty. Look at me. Command that it be made bread. Command that. You're sure said man doesn't live just by the bread alone. He doesn't live by that alone. But he live by call every word that proceed out of the bosom of Almighty Yah. You're sure he is coming. And he has come, but he is coming. To whom the coming as a living stone. He was new or he was disallowed. He was held back. He was forbidden. By the scholarship mind or the mind of scholar of the scholars. He was indeed, he was indeed disallowed indeed by men. But he was he was elect. Are we the elect of Yah? But he was chosen of Yah and precious. You have been, you have been rejected by man, but you have been the elect of Yah. You have been chosen, you have been the Bakhir, and you are the chosen of Yah, you are the elect of Yah. Indeed, we should be a lively stone, Yisra'ya. We are, you cannot build a house without the stone. You begin in stonework, you got to finish. Or you may be able to lay some timber and some of the beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, cedar wood in there. But you still got to, if you have no nails, anything like that, you got to make sure that there's stonework around that. And it's got to fit precisely, Yisra'ya. So this stone has been absolutely disallowed a man. And so Hashatan said to Yahshua, if you have the power, you be the son of your command, this stone. This stone has not been a disallowed a man because everyone loves me. You know that. Yisra'ya. You think one of the most formidable foes of hell, uh, all that transpired between him and Yahshua is written right there? You think that there were words that were just very elect and, and very smooth words and very choice? No, sir. Yahshua was not some little puppet. 
of a little effeminate, faggot looking dyke thing that has been depicted by man. He was a man. He was the son of man. He was the Ben Adam of Yah. He was the authority of Torah. He was a judge. He didn't have to judge this damn wicked war because it was already condemned. He said, This is a lot of men, but chosen of Yah and precious. He says unto us, You also. Does it say that in 2 Peter, 1 Peter 2 5? 1 Peter 2 5? He says, You. Is that us? So he says to her, He says, It didn't. That means her. Your woman, feminine. It didn't. He says to him, It dim, it dim, it dim, it dim, it dim, it dim. He addressed you as a man. He addressed her as a woman. It dim, you. He addressed you as a man. It dim, you man. To you, to us, Yisraya, you also as lively stones. There was a stone that was disallowed. He said, we are the lively stones. This beast needs a lively stone. Come on, give me, uh, give me the stone and I'll show you why he needed that stone. It is vital. We must understand. We've been tricked all of our lives. We've been tricked by liars and oppressors. Robbers and thieves to rob us. Take the money and spend it on them lavishly. We've been tricked like jackasses. And that's the truth. Now it's time for us to grow up. You also, he's talking to us. Your lively stone. Your lively stone. You're built up a spiritual bay at a house. You cannot build a house without stone. We don't want a wooden house, we want a stone house. In, in, in a great house, there are many vessels. Vessels of honor, vessels of dishonor, vessels of gold, vessels of silver, vessels of wood, vessels of stone. I want to be a vessel of gold. Tried, purified in the five yah. He said, you are lively stones. We are the stones of the restoration of his name, his kingdom, his government. You understand this beast of hell is trying to restore his kingdom of darkness for one thing, to fight against the kingdom of Yah. That's why he must have the Mesak. He, he must have his chip in your mind. You must always have a chip on your shoulder against Yah. You must always have a chip in your mind against Yisrael. He wants your right hand, the strength of your birthright, uh, that he may induce into you a profane uh, and a vile aura. And every time someone sees you, you're vile, you smell like a pile of hog dung. You stink, your breath stink, uh, you smell like a dog. No damn dog has gone into the kingdom. No dog. We're lively stone. Command the stone. What has that to do with the right hand? Well, we will find out. It's either I'm going to show you my buffoonery, or Yahweh will reveal his truth. So either way, it's going to come to a conclusion, isn't it? All right then. Either way, it's all right with me. Hallelujah. He says, you are Yisrael, you the elect, you are a lively stone, built up a spiritual behat, he says, a kadosh, a set apart uh, office of Kohan. For what? To offer up spiritual zabak offerings acceptable to Yah by Yahshua HaMashiach. We are to offer. That's why Hashotan knew that uh, he would have no place and he has no place. Uh, he knew this, Yisraya, that you can never offer up an offering. Uh, does it take... Uh, Bread or the lechem offering, we need that in the bed. Are we not a bed of Yah? Are we not the spiritual house of Yah? Was not there the place where the offerings of Yah were offered unto Yah? His zabaka was it not there? So take this stone, commanded bread, that I may present this to Yah as a, a living offering unto Yah that he must accept. You understand? 
There's no wasted words there. This damn generation has used it as some of the toy. Oh, he said, we got to talk about that. You got these hypocrites that have sat under these women and these Kenny Copeland type whorehouse gospel. Damn the gospel. That mess. I know what the word derived from. And they all are like, I've watched them in this rostrum. Get this now, catch this. Hell, you're not giving me anything to catch. I can go to Kenny Copeland, he can explain it better than you. I wouldn't buy from these damn wicked men. I would not buy their, I would not even listen to them for any inspiration. I would not even listen to any of that to give me something to teach on. I can go back and listen to these ark here and listen to the preaching I preach and give me thousands and ten thousands of messages. Hallelujah. We are to offer up the spiritual offerings unto Yah. The bayat, the restoration of the house of Dawid is going to be restored, Yisrael. You're sure he, he is the root and the offspring of Dawid. You understand? He is the beginning of the creation of Dawid. And he is what has come out of Dawid. He is still the elect. He is still. Yah's, Yah's promises are still going to dwell with Dawid. So this beast wants this stone to be made bread that he may bring an offering unto Yah, an offering of lechem. No, you're not going to get this from the Kenny Copelands. You're not going to get these from these liars thumping their damn Jesus and their lords and their Baals. It's not coming this way. You're boasting, man. No, I'm telling you the truth. And I boast in that. Hallelujah. Kephar says uh, in verse 6, Wherefore also it is contained in the Katuv, Behold, I lay in Tizion a chief cornerstone. Command this stone that it may be made bread. Was not that bread of life there with Yisrael in the wilderness in the Midbar? So he is saying, command the stone. Was not there an omer of the manna in the Ach of the Covenant with Yisrael? Sure it was Yisrael. In that little box, was not there an omer of, uh, of that, what is that, manna? And so this beast is trying to duplicate Yah. He's trying to duplicate that in the minds of the people and work upon a fringe that is so familiar people will not even know. Today people don't even know what truth is. You ask people what is truth? Oh, it's his word, brother. It's his word. What is his word? It's more than just his word is based upon truth. His word is based upon a principle and a foundation of stone. He said, is it not written in the book uh, that Yah lays a chief cornerstone, elect precious, uh, and he that believes on him shall not be bush, he shall not be ashamed or confound. Uh, is not your sure the chief cornerstone? Uh, we should not be confound, yes, Rayah. Not at all. That's what Hashatan said, take the stone. Is he not the bread of Yisra'ya? He's the chief cornerstone, isn't he? But he's the bread of life as well, is he not? You think that him having uh, this bread or this stone being made bread, uh, you think it's not for the fulfillment of his uh, kingdom devious work? Sure it is. That's why on television, on commercials, when we would go to the movies, I heard this back in the days, uh, that there would be a little small clip in there, one billion of a second, to deal with the subliminal, the mind that you're not even thinking, and they pop popcorn there, and, and before you went, when you went in the movie house, they always had these little reruns before the, or these little previews before the movie start. I was in a segregated neighborhood, so when we went to the movie house, you know what it was like. In my side of the town, when I was growing, we had the rich theater, which was nothing but rats, and the grand theater. And folks really didn't go to the rich because the rats there. We went to the grand theater. I don't know, it was a nickel, dime, 25 cents back then. 
You will go there and they show the same old pictures, the mummy, the blob. Same silly mess. We go there early for the matinee. And everybody ate the same thing. Popcorn, milk, duds. You could sit there without any popcorn. You could sit still without getting some milk duds. Because they channeled that perception in your mind. You got to get up. I got to get some milk duds. Get some milk. Get a big old bag of popcorn. Get me some milk duds. Even if you didn't like milk duds, you ate milk duds. That's the truth. And so it is today. It's through the power of the subliminal. Through these deceptions of words as he did Shiva. Command the stone to me made bread. And I would take the om of this bread. I would take this and put it in the, in, in the, in, in the ark of the covenant with my people. Be the sure sign of the hand of Yah upon me. The seal approval. His right hand is his seal approval of you, Yisra'ya. That's why he keeps us in his right hand. Your sure is his right hand. This is seal approval of us. Hallelujah. We won't be ashamed of this stone that he lays in the Zion. It says to us, to you therefore who believes, he is pressure. He is migdana. He is the chosen most excellent thing. But to those that are mara or disobedient, those that are very contentious and rebellious, the stone with the builders disallowed, the same has become the rush pinna, the chief of the corner. Are we not the stone that this nation, the world is denying? We are the cornerstone of the building of the Bayat of Yah. Even those that came before us must wait upon us, Yisra'ya. They cannot do it without us and we cannot do it without them. The stone that the builders rejected. We are lively stone, are we not? You think we're not incorporated into this building? And that's what Hashatan was, Yisra'ya. In order for us to understand this, we must go back to the better sheet. And next week, Yah's will, I will go back and show you the same stone. Uh, beginning in the book of better sheet. Uh, it's there. We must understand this, Yisra'ya. You must have... Uh, the composite material to build any kingdom or to build any infrastructure of the kingdom. And Ashatan knows that. And one of the most profound uh, centerpieces of Yah's kingdom is this. Can I tell you? It is the place of offerings and batach or sacrifices. Batach before Yah. It must be. That's why he inhabit the, does he inhabit the praises of the Kedushim? That's the centerpiece. And Ashatan knows that. He knows that. Hallelujah. So he got everyone today doing their little teaching, their little No worship at all. There are no accolades. There's no singing or lifting of their hands. There are groups that say you shouldn't sing. That's, that's the Christian's way. That's a lie. Everything that had breath, praise Yah. He tell us to praise him on our timbrels uh, and, and with our music and all our instruments and dancing uh, and singing to make sure um, unto Yah. These are damn beasts. And they come in these damn dead, dirty whore houses, uh, filthy bottles of wine, drinking their wine, sipping, uh, and it is dead as hell. I'm not taking anything back. Hallelujah. Verse 8, the stone, he is a stone of stumbling. He is a rock. How can he be a stone and a rock now? He's a stone, isn't he? So this stone is not like a little pebble or a little rock you get out there. It's not that. That's not what Hashotan said. He's not only a stone, but a rock. He's a rock of offense. When you got a rock that is offensive to the defensive, uh, you got a rock that is offensive, come on, Yisraya, there's no force can overtake that. He's a rock of offense, even to them uh, who negeth that stumble at the daba at the word. We stumble at the word, don't we? Come on, Yisra'ah. We stumble at the word of Yah. Even we have been disobedient unto Yah, which they also were appointed. We that love Yah, we know that all things work for His excellence. To them that love Yah, and we that are called according to His purpose. We've been in Him ever since He was Him. Your name was in Him when He was Him. He says this to me. 
you are chosen a people elected your chosen generation you are the people of promise in the bosom of your, your chosen generation he said you are a royal a royal khan or a royal priesthood he said you are a khadosh am a nation a people not only that but you are a peculiar you're not like everyone you're different there's a difference between my people and the people of hell you are peculiar people for what purpose that you should show forth the praises of Yah, whom has called you out of darkness into the excellence of his marvelous light that's who you are Yisrael. We are the right heart of Yah. He has elected us to show the excellence of His all oh, His light. He assigned all these superlatives unto us, uh, and not us, Yisrael. He is. I was going to close there, but let me read this from Yeshaya to bring in line with what Shaus and uh, what Kefa says in this. And I'm going to stop there, and then. We began on this journey on next Shabbat. The mark of the right hand, the stone, command it to be made bread. Yah is not going to command the stony veneer heart of ours to be made whereby others can eat the offerings of that bosom. There must be a changed heart. He's going to have to take that damn thing out, Yisra'ya, for he teaches us that. The prophet, the Nobi, Yeshaya, Isaiah 8 14 as he's prophesy of the same event that Kepha prophesy and speaks of he says here in Yeshaya Isaiah 8 14 and he shall be for a mikdash place but he shall be for a stone of Negev a stone of stumbling and he shall be a rock of uh, mikshul, of offense, one that caused one to stumble and fall. To who? To both houses. To both Beit Yisra'ya. To the house of Yehuda. To the house of Yisra'ya. To the tribe of B uh, Yehuda and, uh, and Benjamin. Those that have separated themselves. Those that think that they have a command of the Torah and knowledge of the Torah. And Yisra'ya think because uh, they have this persona of their self-righteousness. Uh, and because they say they're Yisra'ya, they're right. Uh, and the mind is separated, Yisra'ya. It's no praises unto Yah. We should be a house uh, whereby the praises, the adulation of Yah should go forth uh, into Hashemayim. That's what it should be, Yisra'ya. Not this folly we see today. This is your shoe. He is a rock of offense to both houses of Yisra'ya for a, does it say trap in your rendition? What it says there? A what? A trap. That's what a jinn is. Isn't it a trap? A jinn? A pak? A trap. A trap. And also a snare. Does it say snare? All right, a snare or a mukhash to the inhabitants of Yerushalayim, to those that speak as though that they have the essence of Yah, and to give them a special place, and yet they're walking in their folly, they are walking under the auspices of the kingdom of hell. They're the sons of the right of Hashatan. That's why Yahshua says, you of your daddy the devil. I tell you the truth and you don't even believe it. Your daddy tells you a lie and you buy it. Hallelujah. Verse 15. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. He commands us this. Bind up the testimony, the tehuda, the affirmation. The confirmation of this truth today. Bind up the testimony. He said and seal the Torah. Among my disciples. It's vitally important that his Torah be sealed among us. 
You be the son of Yah, command this stone, this stone. It says, someone turn to Luke quickly. Luke 4 and 3. I want you all to remember this because he says here in Luke 4 and 3, did he not say, command this stone or a stone or some stones? What does it say? Say it so I can hear you. Say it loud. Everyone turn there. What does it say? This stone, that stone, or those? What does it say? Come on, everyone. What does it say? Do it again for me. Uh, I want you to retain that, those two words, this stone. We read it, but it doesn't mean a damn thing to us. This stone. Does it say this stone? Does it say this stone? We need to understand what this stone is then. Do we not? Shall we do, Yisraya? Shall we do? I'm going to stop there for today. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop here. Then we shall proceed on the Shabbat. Continuing here. It may take two more teachings on this. Hallelujah. We greet you all that have joined us on this Shabbat. I do want to inform you all of how the order of service will be. May Yabrak you all may strengthen you all Yisrael and Yahshua. And let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Let us turn toward Yerushalayim, the city of Yah. And all things we do, we rock you this day, Yah, for your blessings, your riches, and your sure touch your people. Grant unto them strength in every facet. Bless them as we prepare for this Pesach, as we come to this most beautiful time. We told that you, Yah, here for the rain. We know that our Achmikaya was somewhat difficult for them. But we do be rock you for the rain. We're not praying for it, but we thank you, Yah, I do. And can't wait to walk and see the garden because I know what the rain does. We told you for the rain, for the garlic, and all the plants and the field, the pasture, the grass, for the peace. Told that, yeah. We told you for the rain of the Ruach. Bless you. And all those that have joined us live, look upon them all and keep us all. Bless us to love each other and to be friends and to be kindly affectionate one to another. That's what we need above all things. I need it above all men. Yeah. We ask all of these blessings. Strengthen Yisra, Yah, scattered abroad in Yahshua's name. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Yah, Barak.